we've all kind of hit the lottery. We get to do what we love to do, uh, you know, and support our families and make a living doing it. Um, but also, I think, you know, we play music because it's also like a form of therapy for us. Like, just like the listener, music can be therapeutic, but for the players as well. And so I think, you know, being pent up and locked down in your house for the past year and not being able to have that creative outlet, I think, you know, there's a lot of uh, musicians that are really antsy and uh, ready to get out and just start letting it flow again. I've been trying to take advantage of the time off because this is the most amount of time consistently that I've been home since my wife and I started our family. And so we decided we wanted to really focus on making memories with our children. And so I've been spending a lot more time playing with my kids than I was playing with my guitars, you know? And I'm grateful for that. Um, but just knowing that, you know, I didn't want to get out and embarrass myself. I didn't want to get out and disappoint my bandmates, you know? So like uh, I started really kind of woodshedding uh, a few weeks ago kind of leading up to this to get my speed and my dexterity kind of back where it needs to be so that was really the only thing that's the only concern for me because you know I have the utmost faith in the band and the guys that I surround myself with that we're going to get up there and we're going to you know bring 150 percent so I just wanted to be on top of my game well I mean to me I learned uh you know that there's more to to me than which I kind of already knew this about myself but there's more to me than just being a, a guitar player and creating music. Um, you know, I'm very much a family man and a, and a very serious father. And, you know, I like to do a lot of other things and I'm, I'm a very handy person. So, uh, you know, I've been kind of digging into a lot of do it yourself projects and stuff like that. I just know that I'm also not the kind of person, and I've always known this about myself as well, is that I'm not the kind of person to just sit around and do nothing. So, you know, when the, when the opportunity to play live music was taken away, um, you know, I can only sit around and do nothing for so long before I start finding things to do because I need to accomplish, I need to set goals and accomplish things, you know, it makes you feel good, it builds your self-esteem, and in the process, you know, you learn some new skills and stuff like that. So I've been really focusing on a lot of that and, you know, what kind of other areas of life does Kenny Wayne Shepherd enjoy participating in? I mean, we went hiking and stuff, and I'm not a, I mean, historically, I've not been the kind of guy to go on hikes, but I've you know, learn to appreciate different aspects of getting out into nature and, uh, you know, and, and things like that as well. So, you know, I know a lot of people have done it and I think, it, you know, for a lot of people it was, a, it was the appropriate thing to do and we considered doing it and then, uh, you know, some other things happened so we postponed it. And now that live music is, it looks like it's coming back, I think that, you know, personally for me, I don't think there's any real substitute for going to see a band live and in person. Um, you know, you can get a live DVD, which we put one out last year during COVID because um, it was the only way that people were going to get to see us play so they could see us in the comfort of their own home. But I still don't think it's the same kind of spiritual experience uh, sitting at home watching it on a screen as you have when you're actually interacting and sharing energy with the band and the band with the audience and stuff. So I still don't think there's a substitute for the actual attending the live performance. Um, but I think that, you know, for anybody that that's worked for, I think it's, it's great to have any, you know, more tools available for you to spread your music, reach more people and support your families. No, I think, you know, it's up to every individual as to how they market themselves, you know? And so, uh, one blues artist, you know, may consider him to be this kind of blues artist and another blues artist may consider him to be a different kind of blues artist. And that's one thing that I think, you know, in, in a world in which everybody is trying to preach this message of in, uh, inclusivity and trying to be, you know, include everybody and stuff and not shut anybody out, I think that they need to, uh, appreciate you know all forms of the genre as well and so you know there's people that are traditional blues there's people that are you know contemporary I mean there's all these different names the unfortunate thing is is that everybody feels they need to put a, a label on everything and ultimately I mean I don't my music has always been a hybrid I mean we've done traditional blues albums for sure but from my very first album up until now, I've usually taken the route of taking blues as the foundation of my music and mixing with other genres that I grew up listening to as well. And you know, whether that's called contemporary blues or blues rock or whatever, it's like, you know, I think I just call it good music. I call it honest to goodness, straight from the heart, American music. And that's what we play. And I, as an artist, like to have the, you know, maintain my right 
for creative liberty and to make any kind of music or any kind of record that I feel inspired to make. And the fans, thankfully, have supported me for 30 years doing that. Um, but as far as a marketing situation goes, I mean, I think that it, it's up to the artist. I don't think you can lump every artist in a single genre under one marketing umbrella. I think we're all individuals and it's up to you how you market yourself. And so you have control of that. In today's world, um, you know, artists should have more control than they've ever had due to social media and uh, the internet and, you know, streaming services and YouTube. You have a lot of ways to let people know who you are, let people know what your music is all about and get it out there to them. So I don't think we should be putting the blame um, on anything that has to do with a single genre. We should take responsibility. Well, there's a number of them. I don't really know what the best is. It also depends on your demographic, right? Like younger people are more into Instagram. Uh, you know, a little bit older demographic. I would say the majority of the blues uh, fan base is a Facebook uh, demographic. So um, then there's a lot of these other ones that I don't even mess with. Like, you know, like I, I, I'm not, I, 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 I'm really limited in, in like how far I go with that stuff. I personally, uh, use social media as a tool to connect with my fans. It's like direct marketing, you know, and stay engaged with them and stuff like that. But I'm also a very private person. So I've always kind of, it's a little bit counterintuitive to me to constantly be updating everybody as to exactly what it is that I'm doing because I've traditionally been a real private person. But as far as music, I mean, there's SoundCloud, you know, then you have like uh, YouTube and, you know, Facebook videos and you can put music on all of that kind of stuff. So it's really kind of like, I think a lot of it has to do with what's the age group that you're trying to reach. And that is, that kind of determines the most appropriate uh, social media network for you. It's the reality of the world we live in today. I mean, I, I'm kind of like, I'm this weird, uh, person that a lot of what I do and a lot of what I love is very old fashioned and very analog and uh, very old school. And then at the same time, I enjoy some of the benefits of technology. And so in one regard, I really, um, you know, I came in at the kind of end of the era of actually making records before Pro Tools was invented. Um, you know, people buying records and creating the booklets and the liner notes and the whole nine yards and putting, you know, the record on the record player, the CD and the CD player and flipping through the book and while you're listening and that whole experience. And that's just not something that really happens anymore unless you're a vinyl enthusiast, really. So I kind of prefer an analog, uh, you know, I'm more of an analog consumer of music, but the convenience of the digital era and the digital age has taken over and so it is what it is. And so, you know, we have to embrace that. You know, you kind of have to embrace uh, where um, your, your industry is going if you don't want to be left behind. That's all personal opinion. It's like, who's the greatest guitar player? Who's the greatest blues player? Who's the greatest this? That's all a matter of personal preference because the greatest to one person is not the same. It's not the same answer for everybody. So I think what makes a great musician is somebody who just really follows their heart, plays, really tries to, to me, what resonates with me as a listener is the people that are drawing from the inside and they're, they're really pulling every note from right here and it's coming through them like a conduit, you know, and it's flowing through them into the ears and into the souls of the people listening to it. And a lot of times, you know, the stuff that really resonates with me best is those guys like BB and Albert King and Albert Collins and um, you know, so many of those players that could just hit one or two notes or, you know, and just milk it in just the right way. And I, you know, I, I often find myself feeling far more moved and affected by a select few notes played with 100% emotion than a flurry of notes that I've never heard played that fast or that way together before, you know, and I really appreciate players that have a far greater vocabulary than I do on guitar um, and can do a lot of things that I can't because I'm wowed by that. But when I really feel moved inside, it's usually a guy like Albert King who's just bending one note just the right way and letting it hang for that perfect length of time. Well, when uh, COVID happened, we had just wrapped up like almost two albums worth of material. So our intent was we, we had the whole rest of 2020 booked um, and into 2021 and we were going to be 
you know, finishing out a tour, supporting the traveler and then release a new album and keep the train rolling. Um, so then COVID hit, the lockdowns happened. And then uh, that's when we decided to put out Straight To You Live, our first ever live DVD because fans have been asking for it for decades. And um, so we finally decided, you know, this is probably the best opportunity to give them that experience. Um, so I've kind of been sitting on all this new material because I don't want to release it in the midst of COVID because ultimately we put out records so we can go and play the new music for the fans. So it, it seemed to be, um, it was just didn't seem, it, it seemed to be kind of pointless to me to put a whole new record out in the midst of all that if we couldn't go out and support it and, and bring the tour to the fans. So as long as things continue, as the, the way that they're looking, like things are gonna start getting back to normal and live music is gonna start becoming a regular thing again. We get through the rest of this year in 2021, everything is still good um, for, as far as touring goes, then I anticipate we're gonna start releasing new records you know, or, over the course of the next year for sure. Here's the thing. I've always said from day one, um, in regards to all awards, like, I never woke up as a kid and picked up my guitar saying, I really hope I win an award one day for this. You know, I picked up the guitar and played music because, because I love to play music and I love to play the instrument. So the, the awards are really, it's kind of like secondary. You know, ultimately I feel like the approval of the fans is far greater than the approval of a board. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm not gonna say that I think it's great. I think anything that supports the genre is great um, because we need more awareness. And uh, there's all these artists. I mean, there's a lot of tremendously talented people that that perform and create music in this genre. And I think they all really should be celebrated. Um, so the awards help bring awareness to that. Um, so, you know, if they choose to nominate me, I think ultimately the people are the ones that you know, I think are supposed to be the ones that choose that. So we'll let the audience, you know, speak for that. I'm not gonna necessarily reject it. I don't really know, to be honest with you. I kind of have to see how things go. Well, you know, there's been a lot of things going on uh, in the blues community that uh, just recently that have been, you know, somewhat controversial, somewhat difficult for a lot of people to talk about. Um, and without digging too deep into that stuff, there was, there's just been a lot of divisiveness, a lot of people trying to paint certain pictures, um, a lot of people with their own agendas, um, maybe on both sides of the fence. Um, but she and I, you know, realized uh, that, you know, the, the best example anybody can ever set forth in times of devices, d divisiveness is to come together, you know, because united, uh, any group of people are more powerful and stronger together uh, than divided. So, um, and she and I have a long history together, you know, and uh, we've been talking for years about making music together, doing a record together or, you know, a song or whatever. And so this just gave us the opportunity, you know, to take, you know, some really powerful names uh, in the blues community and genre and get us all together and stand together and say, hey, you know, like no matter what every narrative everybody's trying to push here, like this is the reality. And the reality is, is that we all get along and we all appreciate, we're the people making the music and, and we're the ones that are letting you know that we get along, we support each other, we encourage each other, we want to work together, we want to see each other succeed. And we did that by example. And I think that, you know, the song has a really strong message of unity, but it also, you know, just, lets people know like where we stand i mean there's going to be critics it's like the <laughs> like this you know in the song it says you know liars gonna lie haters gonna hate you know but then at the same time it's like if you're willing to get together the ones of us that are willing to get together are going to do that and we and that's what we got to do and so um ultimately i think that good music is always met with a good response um, and on top of it, you know, we had great musicians. We had Tony Coleman, you know, from B.B. King's band. We had Robert Randolph. We had Shamika Copeland. We had Kenny Wayne Shepherd. I mean, uh, we had a whole room full of incredibly talented people coming together, playing music. So right off the bat, you got great musicianship. Then you got a great song. Then you got a great message, right? So like, I don't know what's not to like. Ultimately, somebody's going to always try and find a problem with something. But this song isn't for them. 
the song, you know, we create music for the people who want to appreciate what we do. And everybody has the ability to speak with their wallet or with their support. It's like, if you like what you hear and you like that artist and what they're doing, then go support them, buy tickets to their concerts, listen to their music, buy their records. If you don't, then don't, you know? That's how, you know, you can show whether you approve or disapprove. And I think, you know, the overwhelming majority of people have uh, spoken in this situation. Look, I remember the first time I met him, we were playing an outdoor festival. I can't remember where it was at. And I saw him standing backstage and I was like, I ran up to him and I introduced myself to him. And I was like, man, I'm a huge fan. And he just looked kind of shocked, you know, um, and surprised, I guess, you know, that, that I was saying that. But man, I mean, he, the kid is so talented and he's so good and he's got all the right things, you know. And so I'm excited to see somebody like him coming up and getting the attention, you know, that I think he deserves. I mean, ultimately, the only thing that the, the biggest uh, the biggest piece of advice that I followed uh, throughout my youth and my entire career is to not allow anybody to make me do something I didn't want to do when it came to my music. So, you know, every record that I wrote and recorded is what I felt inspired to to write and record at that moment. You know, it's a moment, it's a snapshot of a moment in time. It's a represent, representation of who I was in a, as an artist in that moment, right? But I never had anybody, I never let anybody make me do something musically that I did not want to do. Because you know, ultimately, if, if you do that and you're successful, you have to play that for the rest of your life. So you have to own that, you know what I mean? So you need to make sure that everything that you're doing, you're, and it's your career. So, you know, you gotta be involved in every part of the process and every decision that's made uh, because you're the one that has to live with it at the end of the day. And uh, I feel like he's, you know, well on his way with all of that stuff, you know. And then there's other things that you just learn by trial and error and uh, making mistakes and experience. And, you know, no amount of, of advice is going to teach somebody that sometimes. You just have to learn some lessons for yourself. I know historically, I have met thousands and thousands of young boys and their fathers bringing them to my shows because they know my story that i started playing when i was a kid you know i saw all these amazing musicians it changed my life it motivated me to be the player that i am i was successful as a teenager um and they you know it's like they're sharing this music together father and son but they're also it's there's that connection you know uh, with my story and them and looking at, looking at their son. And so I've always known that there have been young people with their eyes on me. Um, and I've always felt a responsibility to try and, and be the best example that I could possibly be for those people. Um, and I think Joe probably has felt the same way. Now that we're older, I think we're just older, you know. Uh, I think ultimately we've always done everything that we could uh, I know I have, and I've, I mean, I've seen what he's done over the years as well, uh, to spread the word about blues music, to give credit where credit is due, uh, to the musicians that inspired us, that paved the way for people like us, um, that created the genre, um, you know, to give back to people in the genre. And, uh, I mean, you know, I know I've taken it very seriously and I've gone out of my way. I feel like my history, and my record uh, speaks for itself in that regard, and so does his. So yes, I think we take that seriously, um, but that's also kind of like what being a responsible person is all about. I mean, if you're talking about exclusively my career, I, I, I don't know, we've, there's been a lot of highlights, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not one to, I really kind of shy away from, you know, um, tooting my own horn or like it always kind of makes me feel a little embarrassed when I hear people five time Grammy nominated you know BMA this you know Billboard Music Awards and all that stuff but you know without a doubt I mean um, I'm I'm proud of what we've accomplished I mean we've sold millions and millions of records over the years uh, you know number one songs at radio uh, I mean a whole string of you know top 10 top five songs at radio um, Blue on Black being, you know, at the time the longest running number one single in the history of that Billboard rock chart, you know, like a lot of great accomplishments. I think ultimately, though, if you look at all those, none of them, and this might sound like a cliche answer, but it's the absolute truth. None of those things ever would be possible without the support of the fans. 
and amassing and acquiring through the music that we've recorded and performed over the years a fan base that is so large that has supported us for 30 years now um, to me that's the biggest accomplishment you know we don't have fair weathered fans we have family our fans are our family and they're with us through thick and thin and you know uh, through this album and that album and that direction and this direction they take they're along for the ride with us and they're there every step of the way and uh, they're they're the people that have enabled me to do what I do and to make all of those things a reality 